My name is Nick Whittison. I am um, giving a talk called Using Web APIs in iOS Apps. So if you ever wanted to learn how to connect to the internet with your iOS apps, this would be the way to do it. Um, first bit's a little bit about me. Um, that's me, if you haven't noticed. I like to wear hats. I do a lot of things. Um, a little story about that photo. That, that there, oh, I'm from, I'm from uh, Hobart, by the way. That there is the, is the line for the, the iPad release um, at Hobart. So as you can see, there's, there's three guys, and the, uh, the one in the middle was there just to talk to me because he happened to be walking past in the morning. Um, so we've got a lot of people down there. Um, not represented by the, we, we've got so many people at DevWorld. It makes us look like we have a lot of people. Um, we just have a lot of enthusiastic people by percentage. Um, as I said, I am from, from UTAS. Um, so I'm doing my undergrad there at the moment, um, doing a Bachelor of Science. I nearly finished that one. I'm going to do honors next year. And I'm also a, a mobile software engineer for Secret Lab. Um, I do some, some projects for them. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about um, what a web API is, um, a little bit uh, about REST and uh, what that means in terms of connecting to the net. Um, we can talk about NSU URL requests and, and what the hell that means. Um, it's, a, it's a long word, and hopefully you'll know what it means by the end of it. Um, and then we're going to speak a little bit of JSON, because that's what all the cool kids are doing now. So um, let's start off with the first one. Um, so like so, some of you guys might be a bit like me when I started. And I'm like, what, what does API even mean? I've heard it thrown around so many times. I don't, I don't even know what it stands for. So it stands for Application Programming Interface. And basically, it's, it's your way of interacting with another system. Um, it lets you get in there, manipulate data, receive stuff back if you need to, um, pretty much anything you want. So an API can, can be general, um, like MacOS um, and the iOS API that we know as Coco. Um, interacts with system calls, with device stuff, um, lets us use what, what we want to code. Um, or it can be really specific, like, uh, like th things like Twitter or Google Maps um, or Facebook all have an API for accessing a specific job that you do in there. Um, and so that brings me to, to web APIs. In this, um, in this context, a web API is, is a, a set of um, HTTP requests that, uh, that you can use to, to access data from within a, a, a service. Um, an example of web APIs, like, as I've said, could be things like Twitter, uh, Facebook, or Flickr. Um, now, these guys will give you extensive information on how to interact with their services. Um, and and this, this information is, is usually linked to, to resources or, or something of the sort, which you can um, use to, to call into your apps. And uh, once, you, once you get the data back from the service, you can display it however you like. Um, there are many more web API and, and web services out there. Um, and you can even set up on your own servers um, sort of mock-style uh, mock downloads for, for testing um, using the the method I'm going to show you a little bit later. So traditional client server models look a little bit like this. You've got a guy sitting at a computer talking to, to a server, um, which goes away, finds the data that you asked for, brings it back, and, uh, and sends it back to the, to the person. But uh, newer client server models might, uh, might include guys looking a little bit like this. Now, now these guys are all on millions of different devices at the same time. Um, and they're connecting to, to all sorts of services, all, all concurrently. Um, so how do, we, how do we get around um, the fact that, that millions and millions of people might all be connecting to the same server at the same time? Um, consider that, that Twitter has 110% uptime. There must be some sort of um, method that they use to, to help scalability. Because, um, I mean, everyone needs to tweet about their breakfast. Um, the, the method they use is called REST, and it stands for Representative State Transfer. So it's one of those cool new Web 2.0 ways of interacting with, with web services. It affords itself to scalability, um, and the, the way that it works um, lets it be, be used all, by all sorts of people at the same time. So what, what exactly makes a RESTful service? Um, there's a clear distinction between clients and servers. So um, uh, when, when, the, when a client sends a, a response, the server simply tends to that response and then goes back to doing whatever it was doing before it was asked. So 
that, that means there's no sort of per client load on, on the server as such. So it doesn't, doesn't sort of uh, keep, keep track of what your client's doing when it's not making a call. Um, the, the server said, oh, sorry, the, the, the a REST API is, is stateless in that, as I said, it doesn't hold any information about the client um, on, on the server in terms, of its, um, in terms of its state. So that's up to your client app to, to keep track of what's going on um, and the information you're displaying to your user. Um, however, the reverse is true. So if uh, the, the, the server does have a state, um, or it may have a state, I should say, um, and that's usually uh, accessed by some sort of resource link that, uh, that so for example, the, uh, the Twitter timeline is, would be an example of a resource. Um, and that obviously has a state, and you receive tweets that you sign up for, um, and that lets you ac access those through an API call. Um, a, a RESTful service is cacheable, so um, it, it allows you to uh, have some sort of idea of when your data is old and when you should uh, refresh that to your user. Um, in, in the case of, of Twitter, I guess, there's, uh, uh, you, you have, have some sort of timestamp on there. You know when you've last made your Twitter call if you, if you record that sort of thing, so you can understand when you need to, uh, to ask for, for the newest tweets. Um, and, and finally, there's a, a uniform interface between the client and the server. So when, if, if, for example, um, a web service wanted to change its server architecture, uh, there's no point in having to recode all of your apps all over again um, just because they're, they're starting to use some sort of whiz-bang new server. What, what you want is the same sort of uh, defined rules that interact between the client and the server. Um, and, and the reverse is also true. So um, if, if the... Uh, we don't want to have to have a new set of API calls every time we uh, every time we talk to a different type of device. Otherwise, you'd have iPad specific, iPhone specific, um, Android specific, BlackBerry specific calls, and it would just be a massive mess. So, um, the, yeah, there we go. We'll go on to the next one. So, how how it would work? Um, basically, you would find the the location of the resource you want to to get. Um, now, many web services have some sort of public API or uh, sort of wiki type thing or a documentation that you can use to find out what resource you want to download into your app. Um, you would then make the API call in your app, get your data back, and then process and display that appropriately. So this here is an example of a, of a resource. Um, this is the, the Twitter uh, public timeline. It, uh, it basically uh, responds and gives you back uh, the, the tw 20 latest tweets in the public timeline. Um, Another thing that an API request has is, is a method. Now, like uh, it, it uses the HTTP methods, so you've got get, post, put, and delete, and the other one I always forget. Um, and uh, the, the two most important ones are, are get and post. Um, most of your data manipulation can be done by post, so things like deleting. Twitter uses post. Um, to, you simply send it the, uh, the uh, status of the ID you want to tweet, along with the uh, sorry the, the status of the ID you want to delete, um, along with the appropriate uh, structured call, and I'll go and delete that one for you. Um, and the last thing an API uh, request is made up of is uh, key-value pairs. Now, the body of the request is where you would store those uh, par extra parameters you need to to send in your API call. Um, so. For the uh, for an example like Twitter, there if you needed to send a user ID, you could you could add it like that. Um, they're, they're separated by ampersands, um, and as long as they they follow that sort of structure, um, you'll be able to get everything off okay. So just to recap, the structure of your API call is you have you have a request, um, you, you put a URL, uh, a URL is associated with that particular request. Um, it has a type of a type of method, um, whether it be get, post, or what have you. Um, and a, a request body. Now, that body um, will have all the parameters, as I've said. Um, this here is an example of what we would use as we've gone through the, uh, the public timeline uh, Twitter API call. Now, it's got a couple of extra body things in there, and they're not really that important to, to what I'm doing, but that gives you a bit of an idea of something that's actually true. Um, so now, you know what a web service is. Um, you know the resources you want to get. And you know the calls, you need to find them. So how do we get that into our app? Um, and that gets us to uh, talking a little bit about, more about code. So um, 
how do we use this information to, to make web, web API calls in, in iOS? Um, we'd start off with an NS URL. Um, that's a, a class defined for, for storing um, URLs. Um, it's pretty, pretty simple. You use URL with string there, give it the, the URL you want, um, and it stores that for you. Cool. Um, and the, the backbone of what we're going to be doing is using NS mutable URL request. Now, that's a, a class which um, stores all the, the relevant information that you need to, uh, to interact with a certain service. So um, in this case, you would, you would uh, allocate and initialize one of these with the URL you've already made. Um, and that basically stores that, stores that there so you can add extra stuff. Um, the, the type of method will be set like this. So for example, if you, if you wanted to set a, a get or a post method, that's, that's where you would do it. And the, the body can be set roughly like this. Um, now, these are all in the documentation, and they're, they're pretty simple, and they're intuitive to, to what you would think they would be. So um, it's not, not too bad in terms of uh, getting yourself going. Now, the, the final thing you need before you send off a request is, is an NSURL connection. So that object there is like a, a wrapper, which interacts with the, the network services on your iPhone. It'll send off your request, um, and it will handle all the, uh, the subsequent data that comes back from the uh, from the, the service via um, a few important delegate methods. So um, this, uh, the, the delegate object that you specify um, in, in that call on the last slide must conform to, to these, at least these four, um, there are a few more delegates, at least these four um, delegates here. Now the first one, um, every time you get a response from the server, not necessarily you receive anything, but you actually talk to the server correctly, um, it'll, you'll get a did receive response message. Um, what you do there is you take the time to reset your data object, make sure it's empty so that um, all the data you receive you know is just from this single source. Um, the second one there is uh, did receive data. Now, every time the, the server sends you a little bit of information, you want to tack that on to the end of what you already have um, so that you have a complete package by the, by the end of the, um, the whole sending. Now, the last two here, only one of those will ever be called. Um, so you'll either get a did fail with error or a did finish loading. Now, did fail with error is, is generally something that happens when your internet connection was disrupted or you didn't actually receive everything that the server said it was going to send you. So um, you get that sort of thing. And that's when you would say, hey, something's probably gone wrong. Maybe try resetting your net or something like that. Um, not necessarily that you got an error code from the server. So that's when um, did finish loading would come in. Um, did finish loading gets called when the server finishes sending whatever it was going to send to you, whether that be what you actually asked for or whether that be just some sort of error code saying, hey, you didn't use this API right. Um, and those, or, those four methods um, are what you need to, to connect to that. So we're going to run a little bit of a demo um, and we're going to show this one, show this one working. Um, cool. So we've got a new Xcode project. We'll go in a minute. We're going to make a, an iPad um, view-based application so you can see what happens when it, when it comes out. Uh, one moment. Cool. So um, you start off with a with a base sort of iPad project. Um, I'm gonna open that one there so you guys can see that. I'm gonna work in this window over here. That one? Oh yeah. Cool. Sorry, my notes didn't seem to, to open. Okay. So we've got our, our base, um, base project here. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is set up our header file. So we're going to add um, some, some data, um, some, uh, a place to, to hold the data that comes in. We're going to add a, a instance variable for a request and one for a connection. So we're going to do that in here. Um, and you'll see those are all the all, all of type, except for mutable data. Um, those were the, the things I was speaking about before. Um, oh, 
no, it's going to do that every time. Cool. Um, all right, so we're also going to add um, a, a call in here so that when we, uh, we'll set up a method so that when we press a button, um, we're going to get a call back from the, uh, from the server. All right, cool. Now, um, we've got a few, few methods we're going to implement. Um, the first one is the, the one to set up our connection code. So, open up that file for you so you can see what's going on. So this, uh, this code here, I'll run through, through it with you. Um, basically, what we're, what we're doing, as, as I've shown in the slides, um, we're setting up a, a request that we created in the, in the H file, or we, we created a pointer to in the header there. Um, we're allocating, initializing that with the, the URL of the public timeline. Um, and we're setting the, uh, the, the get method of that um, in, the, in the next line. Now, um, NSURL connection is, is a, is kind of, it works in a kind of a weird way. Um, it's not exactly how you would think it does. So when you, when you actually create an NSURL connection object, in the init methods, unless you tell it to otherwise, it's going to go ahead and start the connection straight away. So um, you don't have to tell it to, to go or to, to start now. There's another, another initialization method for that. Um, but we're basically going to pass in the requests of the thing that we want, and we're going to uh, going to say that we want all the, the delegate methods, all the delegate um, uh, messages to be sent to the current object. Um, now, if everything gets created correctly, um, we're going to, sorry, if everything gets created correctly, um, we're going to set up the received data um, object there. Now, that's the one that's going to store all the stuff that's coming from the server. Um, otherwise, we're probably going to tell the user something went kind of wrong. Um, in this case, it's probably not going to be your your internet, but that's one that I had had there. Um, that one usually won't get won't get cold unless there's something really wrong with the, something that's going on. So we'll just um, we'll just write something in there. Um, and yeah, so that that's the the first way that you would connect to to a server. Now that basically makes your request and sends it off for you. Um, you're not going to get anything back, but it is set up. So the uh, the next bit we're going to set up um, is the uh, connection did receive response. Delegate. All right. So, um, what we're going to do here is just make sure that uh, that we're going to log every step of the way, so we can see what's happening, and it doesn't just look like it's some sort of invisible magic. Um, as I said, we're going to take the time to to set the received data object to to nothing, um, so that we're getting a, a clear slate to receive all our data from the service. And so I did receive data. It's the same sort of thing. We're going to log um, what's going on, saying we received a little bit of data from the connection. Um, and we're going to append the, the end of the data that we receive in the delegate method to the received data object that we've set up. Um, this means it's just going to basically accumulate all the stuff that's being sent from the server and, uh, and mush it all together in, um, yeah, in the final, final uh, when we, we know it's done, we can use it all when it's mushed together. All right, so this one here. Oh. Um, this one here is what happens when you when you uh, when something gets interrupted with the internet connection or something like that. Um, we're just going to tell the user, hey, you know, something happened, or we're going to log that something happened. Um, we're going to take the time to, to clean up any extra objects we had um, and and release those back into the uh, iOS chamber of, of memory fun. Um, and the last one I'm going to put in is did finish loading. Oh, down there. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so that one there, all it does is basically takes the, because uh, we know we've received all the data we're going to get from the server, um, we uh, basically transform that into some sort of string um, that we'll be able to read on the screen when it comes out. So just one other thing we have to do before we make that go is set up some sort of button to, to do that for us. So I have to, to do this one on the screen up here. But I'm going to create a button 
by dragging that one onto the screen. Call it get updates. And simply going to drag from the button. No, we're not. If you hold control properly and drag from the button, I might have to, don't have very much screen real estate here. Um, drag from the button to the files owner. We're going to connect it to the event called get new updates, which is the one we created before. And um, everything should be OK now. Let's save that, uh, save that nib. And we'll build and go and see what happens. Hopefully, I'm still connected to the internet. So, with any luck, we'll have a little bit of. Uh, oh, you have to see on this one. Um, we have a little bit of data in our uh, in our console here. So that's actually gone off to the net, received the 20, 20 uh, latest tweets from the. Uh, from the, uh, from the Twitter server um, in the public timeline and given it back to us in a big uh, bundled mess. Now, um, so that's, that's the, the first demo. Um, wasn't too bad. It's pretty, pretty easy to set up. So we'll go back to the, uh, to the, the slides. Now, so once, once that's all done, um, it's good, right? We, we have our data. Um, what else do we need? Unfortunately, as you saw, it comes out looking a little bit like that, and, and that's 20 tweets. Um, and that's, that's a lot of mess. One tweet looks a little bit like this, um, and that's, that's all bundled together in, um, in a format I, that I chose called JSON. Um, the reason I chose JSON is because it's, it's a, nice, a nicer sort of cruft-free way of dealing with... Uh, with web service data, and most REST APIs will now offer you the option of JSON. It's really quick um, and really smart. So with that, um, we're going to move on to how would you, uh, how would you interpret this JSON, um, and hopefully give you a little bit of an idea of what a, what a parser does. Um, so I'll start off by, by telling you what, what JSON is. Um, it's, a, it's a JavaScript object notation, um, is what it stands for. And basically, it's a way of representing data um, that uh, or resources, if you like. Um, now, JSON um, has a structure that looks a little bit like this. Now, if you go to the website, um, that, that's what you get, and that's kind of awful. Um, it's it's uh, some sort of flow diagram, which is not particularly nice to, to look at. So, um, to give you a bit of an idea, this is what a, data, a, a, a JSON object looks like. Um, you, you've got uh, a, string, a string name, which stores the name of the, the sort of variable, if you like. Um, and you're going to have some sort of value. Now, a value can, be, can also be a string. Um, a value can be an object. A value can be an array, or a number, or a Boolean. Um, there's, there's a big long list of, uh, or not big long, there's a list of, uh, of value types um, on, the, on the JSON website if you want to check it out. Um, in this case, this is an object that defines me. Um, I'm Nick. I'm, I have of type presenter um, and of race human. So the next one that's probably important to us is uh, what an array is. And it's basically just a bunch of these values separated by commas um, and all put together with square brackets. So um, this, this sort of one here, for example, has, um, has a few different values in it, including one of the values which is an object. So that's important to remember. Um, the JSON that comes down in, the, uh, in the, the public Twitter stream is actually a big, long um, array of 20 of these sort of object-style things, as you saw on the, the previous slide, with lots and lots of information in it. Um, most of the information we don't even care about. And in fact, the only information I care about in this demo is, is the, the actual tweet itself. So um, I'll move on to um, SBJSON, which is our magical open source um, JSON parser, which turns JSON automatically, oh, not automatically, it turns JSON magically into Objective C equivalents for us. So, um, for example, a JSON object turns into an NS dictionary, um, which might look kind of similar as if you saw on the other slides. Um, a JSON array turns into an NS array, um, and JSON string turns into an NS string. There's an NS number, and there's a Boolean as well. So, um, to, to use SPJSON, we're going to have to import the uh, the project, as I'll show you later, into the um, into, uh, import the files into the project that we're using, um, and and then we're in the code. We're going to have to make sure we we import that um, in there as well. 
um, we basically declare a pointer to the, the parser. Um, the parser is going to do all the, the hard work for us. And we're going to have to, to initialize the parser somewhere as well. Um, once we've got one of those parsers set up, it's just a matter of creating uh, some sort of container object you want to you throw them the whatever comes out of the parser into. Um, in general, we have to, to figure out which one it is. You can do a test on it when it comes back to figure out which sort of object it is. Um, but in this case, I've just made an array because I know that the, uh, the, the JSON string we're going to get back from Twitter is going to be an array um, style object. Um, you call object with string on the JSON parser. Um, give it the, the string data that you have. Um, and there you go. That's basically what, um, what gets transformed into your, um, into your NS array, which you can use however you like. Um, in this case, it'll be an NS array full of NS dictionaries, um, which I've just gone through. So um, each, each status in this NS array, sorry, each status in, this, in each NS dictionary um, is, is listed under the text object. Um, now, that's, uh, that's one of those string, uh, string name uh, value pairs that's um, in, the, in the big list. So to grab that one out, we're going to, uh, to use, um, we're going to grab the, the, the object that we want, in this case, just the first one off the uh, end of the array, or the start of the array, and we're going to go use object for key, just like accessing a normal dictionary, and grab whatever's in the, in the key text. Um, and hopefully, that means that we can display that on the screen to our, to our users. Um, but again, presentation is everything. So you have to find some sort of way of displaying this to, to your users um, so it looks nice and it looks pretty. And the, the sort of current way of doing it is, or the, the non-imaginative way is, do, is using UI table view. Um, and that's, it, it, it's fairly easy and you see it in pretty much everything. It, it seems to be the only way we have of displaying um, big long lists of data at the moment. Um, it's pretty convenient and it's really customizable, so it's not it's not too bad. Um, the, the UI table view has has a property called data source, um, and when you set this data source in the UI table view, you're you're signing an agreement saying this this object will have um, two different delegate methods in it, um, and the two delegate methods are uh, number of rows in section. So that tells the table view how many rows um, it, it'll have to display, um, and then for every row, it's going to call this uh, table view self for row at index path. So this is one of those abstract concepts, that some concepts of, um, of, of uh, iOS development, which is, uh, or even um, uh, any sort of Cocoa development, that um, delegate you have to sort of get your head around how delegate methods work. In this case, it's going to call this for every, for every uh, row, or so yeah, for every row you set up, it's going to call this method once um, and ask for a table cell. Um, and if it doesn't get that, it's going to crash. It's going to be awful. So. What we're going to do is we're going to run through a quick demo on how to do the parsing. We're going to set up a table view, and hopefully we're going to get this working. So, so we've got our, our project here, which I'll put back onto my screen. Um, now, what we're going to do is go back to... The, the H, uh, actually, first, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the, uh, the JSON, um, SPJSON framework into our class, into our, our project. So we're going to do that by going to classes and clicking add. Um, we're going to, find, uh, going to add some existing files. We're going to navigate to where the, uh, to where the files are stored. In this case, I've downloaded them and put them on my desktop. Um, all the SPJSON files are stored under this folder called classes. So we're going to add that there. Um, and we're also going to, to copy all of those into our project, uh, project folder. So we're going to add all those in there. And once they're all in, we'll give it some sort of meaningful, meaningful name so we can remember what's in there. Sorry. Um, and now, once, once that's set up, that's basically the files already, already in our project. So um, you don't have to do much else in terms of setting it up. That's, that's in there. Um, I'll show you how to, how to include those ones in a second. So we're going to open up the, uh, the H file here. And we're going to add that, that import that I talked about before. Um, so we're going to add, I can do that on my screen. We're going to add that, add that import in, in there. Um, 
and that's basically going to say that uh, we want to have all these files in our in our program, um, including the, the first header. Um, and we're going to add a few extra things into our into our header file now, just so we've set some stuff up. Um, and that is these ones here, as you can see. So we're going to um, create a pointer to an SPJSON parser. Um, we're going to make an NSArray to store all the uh, all the tweets in, uh, all the the dictionaries in there when we get those. And we're going to make a table view and a UI spinner so that you can tell something's going on when uh, when you've clicked the button. So we're going to go to the code. Um, now in the uh, where are we? Sorry. So just up the top here. Um, in the in the view did load here, we're going to um, initialize a uh, a JSON parser just so we know that it's it's um, ready. As soon as the as soon as the view comes up, we're going to know that the JSON parser is ready for us to use. Uh, um, and then we're going to um, implement those two delegate methods that I talk, uh, spoke about um, from the from the table view. The first one is uh, number of rows in section. So what we're going to do is, um, if the if the public timeline exists, that means probably someone someone's already pressed the button, um, and we're going to set the number of cells to the number of uh, objects in the array. Um, otherwise, we're not going to have any cells appear in the in the um, in the table view. So that's pretty pretty easy. Um, now the the last delegate method we have to set up is the uh, cell for row at index path. So this one here, it's got a little bit of reusable code from Apple um, for memory managed uh, cells. Now that one there, you can just go ahead and pop in. Um, basically means it'll create a, a cell for you. Um, if there is uh, cells that have been, uh, that, that have gone off screen and sort of been, been DQ'd, um, you can grab one of those and say, hey, instead of, instead of creating a new one, you just reuse one of the old ones which aren't in use anymore. Um, the really important bit is, is this one down here, which, um, Basically sets the uh, uh, remember that this this method gets called once for every row, so it sets the uh, the text of the cell um, to the object at index index path dot row, and that means that uh, for, because it gets called once for every row, um, it'll call the the right um, the right object in the array there, and um, it'll set, it'll ask that that dictionary for whatever's stored in the text um, text uh, field of that dictionary. Um, and set that to the, the cell label text. Now the uh, last thing we need to do here um, is add a little bit of a step to the bottom of our did finish loading. So if we've set up our, our table view um, and now we've got to populate that, uh, that array um, so, that, so that it'll have something in it. I uh, probably want put it in a weird spot, didn't I? Right, did finish loading is down here. So we're going to get into did finish loading and pop in a little bit of extra code. Um, now this is going to set the, the public timeline array to be whatever comes out of the, the SPJSON parser there. Um, it's going to, going to grab that string, turn it into an NS array. Um, it's going to spit out all that sort of stuff in the console as well. Um, and it's going to reload, uh, importantly, it's going to reload the table view. So it's going to send a message to that table view and say, hey, I want you to go and call all your delegate methods again um, because I've got some new data I want you to display. So. Um, and one other, one other thing I'm going to do is, before I commented out um, a line that was uh, calling a spinner. Now, that's our, that's our little um, UI activity view spinner. Um, and that's just going to show what's happening at any one time. If there's uh, some sort of connection pending, um, it's kind of cool to have one of these in there. Because it'll show you the user what's going on. Um, so the last thing I need to do is set up that display with a, uh, with a table view in it. Because that's probably, probably important. Um, so, so we're going to pop a table view in here. And to resize that. Cool. Um, all right, so it's quite. Um, 
Oh, it's, no, okay. It just looks quite kind of weird on the uh, on the small display. Thought it was in landscape. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So that's that's gonna that's gonna give us a bit of an idea anyway um, on on how to on how to set that one up. So we're just gonna pop that in there. And um, one important thing is we're gonna link it up in code. Um, so we're going to grab um, the file's owner and make sure we link that to the, the table view. Um, and we're going to grab the table view, go back to file's owner, and make sure we link that up to the data source. So that's going to tell the view controller, um, you're my data source, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you to grab all my data out of you. Um, and we're going to add that, uh, that spinner as well. So that one's in there. That's just called a, um, activity view activity view indicator. Oh, the other way around. So we can connect that up to, to Spinner. Um, and now we should be able to, to save that nib. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do. Now, I, um, and a UI activity view spinner actually has a property which lets you set it to invisible when it's not spinning. Um, that's usually a good thing, so it means people don't get confused at what's going on at any one time. Um, so we're going to make sure we've set that one. Let me go build and go. Um, now, just a warning, I'm, I'm not responsible for anything that comes out on here. Um, this, this, is, <laughs> this is coming from the, from the Twitter stream, and in, in my experience, it's not bad. Um, I wouldn't follow any of the links that it says. Um, so it's going to tell us a little bit of a, a little bit of something's going on. And hopefully, ah, there we go. So um, it's given us all the, uh, babies are so cute. Um, so it's given us all of the, the tweets from the public, uh, the first 20 tweets from the public timeline um, for us to display. And it's gone ahead and, and, and displayed them all in there for you. So it's that easy. Um, and we'll go back to the back to the last bit of the uh, last bit of the uh, thing. So you you have access to, to tools that do great things. Now this was a really simple and sort of contrived example because no one wants to see the public timeline because it's useless. Um, but you just you just need to use these tools to to give like give your vision a little bit of a body. Um, Read the documentation. Like, seriously, read it because it contains everything that you need. Um, if it's not if it's not in there, have a look on Google. Have a look in the community. There's generally solutions to all the things that that you want. Um, and if there's some sort of library out there that that formats stuff the way you want it, don't as long as it's open source and you're allowed to use it, don't be afraid to use it because if someone else has done the work for you, just just use their stuff. That's what it's there for. They they want you to do it. Um, and finally, here's a, here's a list of some important stuff you should probably remember. Um, the first one there's the, the iOS um, developer uh, library. So you go in there, find out all the documentation stuff. That's also in Xcode, um, if you've got it there. Um, a little bit of information on, on REST API, um, if you need to find anything more about that. Um, you can go to dev.twitter.com to find out all the, the uh, APIs and stuff that I've used in, this, uh, in the talk, and also many others um, to get it to, to do whatever you want. Um, Go to json.org to find out more about JSON if, if you think I haven't explained it particularly well or if you need to find out more about it. Um, and the SPJSON framework is found on the, uh, the last link there. Um, in fact, that's a different link to the one at the start, but they both go roughly to the same place. So um, if you get confused, there, there's pretty much links everywhere. Um, you, if you want to talk to me, um, you can find me at twitter.com slash Nick Vinton. Um, send me a tweet. I'm happy to, to talk to people about projects or, or anything you like. Um, as I said, I'm also part of Secret Lab. So if you want to send me, a, send me an email, um, just, just send one off to there, and I'll, I'll respond as best I can.